Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm doing two unboxings. Well, unbaggings, kind of. Unenveloping. But I actually have, in addition to that, two other things that came today which I already opened. One I was expecting, one I wasn't expecting, but uh, because I do have one that specifically says to open on camera. Um, let me cover this. Their address. Open on camera. So, figure I'm already recording, might as well show you everything. First thing I can show you, which I was expecting, which I thought was really, really cool. Kenji Sun 1967 sent me some of his teriyaki sauce. Homemade teriyaki sauce infused with boot jalokia. Um, I'm really excited to try this. I'm going to marinate some uh, chicken in this, uh, some chicken breast, and then I'll cook it on the grill. And then I'm going to do a little bit of a schmear. That's right, schmear of it on the outside as well, uh, kind of like a glaze. And I'm going to try that in a future video. Um, it's kind of nice out today. I don't know, maybe I'll do it today, I don't know. But um, I had different dinner plans for tonight. But uh, eventually I will do that. I will film it because he wants an honest opinion. And of course I'm going to give him an honest opinion and I'm really looking forward to it. I love teriyaki sauce in general, but I've never had homemade teriyaki, let alone kicked up a couple notches. So I'm really looking forward to that. And it was very, very cool of him to do that for me. I mean, you know, it's just a really nice thought. So, awesome. Um, the next thing which I opened is this. Let me show you what it is first, and I'll read the, the note to you. Yes, a new chocolate. This is lint chocolate, which I've had lint before, but just the, um, the dark chocolate with mint. This is the dark chocolate with chili. So the ingredients are sugar, chocolate, cocoa butter, milk fat, uh, soy lectin or lecithin, which is emulsifier, and chili extract. Yes. Now, when I say chili extract and hot sauces, it means like, wow, hot. I don't think this, well, you know what? I don't really know. I would assume it's not going to be like ridiculously hot, but they just must use the extract very sparingly just to give that chili flavor. But I don't know what to expect except for I love chocolate and I love chili, so <laughs> I'm sure I'll like it, but who knows? So I'll do a, a video review on that in the future. And here's the letter that came with this. It says, Jeff, I've been watching your videos for a few years, but I'm not a big commenter or video maker. I just like to watch, learn, and be entertained. I was, I was walking through my local store the other day and happened to see this chocolate bar and thought of you. I hope it's as good as it sounds. Enjoy and keep up the good work. This is from Adam. Adam's screen name is the Kid 5254 so Adam, thank you very much. That was really cool of you to, to think of me, you know, while you're in the store. And uh, and it was really, really nice of you to send this gift. So looking forward to trying it. I will do a review on it in the future. So that's just awesome. It's just really thoughtful. Okay, so I have the on-camera thing. And I also have another package here, which is from Dream Castle. And I honestly don't know if this is a gift or something that I'm waiting for. It's something rattling. And for life of me, I can't think, of, like, I didn't, I don't really order anything lately. So I'm not expecting anything, so I'm going to open it. I don't really have no idea what's in there, but maybe it's something I did order. I don't know. I'm going to do this one first. So today, I'm going to use this amazing little case knife, Damascus Warncliffe. And uh, I have an EDC in this. You did not see this in my EDC video, because when I did the EDC video, that was when I transitioned to the other knives and that set up for like four or five days. But I used this prior to that and I've been using it lately. So it's a fantastic knife. You don't always need some kind of massive, you know, huge knife that's locking. And I mean, a little slip joint like this, very classy, very effective. So what we have here, ooh, bunch of stuff in here. A nice note. Let's show the stuff first, because sometimes the note says what it is, and I like to be surprised. Yeah, lots of stuff in here. Wow, look at this. This I'm going to save for the note. It looks kind of like a paper airplane. <laughs> but uh, I'll save this for a moment, because maybe the note has something to say about that. There's a lot of stuff in here. Wow. Oh, my God. All right, let's see. All right, you know what? There's more of these. And I am going to read the note. <laughs> All right. Dear Jeff, my name is Philip, and I am uh, skilled at origami. Most of the knives are made out of paper with aluminum foil glued to the back. Uh, the two that aren't, 
uh, are folders. The rest are fixed blades. I love your channel and would like to send you something uh, as a thank you. I had two black ones that looked awesome, but I lost them. I was going to sell this on eBay, but I could uh, I can only make a max of three cents on each knife if I did. Uh, this is a true story. I made some of this on lined paper at school, then I gave them away. My teacher found out that my friend had that my friend I guess had one. Uh, the teacher sent both of us to the office where we both received two hour Friday detentions. Oh well. It was funny because when the assistant, assistant principal uh, opened her desk, there was a real six inch knife in her desk. She said it was a fancy letter opener. My principal also stole my scissors after, the, after it happened. Feel free to do a giveaway. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's crazy. Um, actually, you know what? I'm grabbing the thing here because I think I saw, yeah, his screen name, it's not in the letter, so it's, it's on the package. So his screen name is Philip. 42184. Just wanted to mention it. Uh, yeah, you know, that that's, of course, you know, I'm totally against that. I think it's ridiculous that you guys got the tension for having paper knives. Um, I don't even know what to say. That's, that's, that's crazy. Uh, I did hear that in some cases people had, uh, kids had gotten detentions or sent home for, uh, like drawing pictures of guns and stuff like that. This was in a different country though. Maybe it was in Canada. Someone had mentioned this to me, actually two separate people mentioned this to me after I did that video on the, the guy who got like a pat down and searched because the daughter drew a picture of his gun or him with the gun. You know, society's, it, it's nuts. I mean, if you bring a knife to school, I still, these days, even though I disagree with it, I understand the concept. And if you physically have a knife on you, yeah, I can understand maybe punishing a person because there's clear rules you're not supposed to, but come on, a paper knife, really? That's insane. So, all right, folder, pull here. Oh, look at this. That's cool. Wow, look at this. <laughs> That's pretty neat. So it's a little folding knife. And it's actually got a different color handle and everything, and then it folds right back in. That is really cool. You know, I love origami, and I stink at it. I can't for the life of me make, make anything. Here's a bigger one. That's what it was before. I thought it was a paper plane. It's a bigger folder. It's pretty cool. I like that. Very cool. We got a bunch of stuff here. Let's see. Uh, this one says blue knife. And I'm not sure exactly how to open this one. I see the blade inside. Maybe the paper clip does come off. Uh, let's see. Hmm. I'm not sure. Unless this, oh no. Maybe this is just a knife. I don't know. I have to play with them and see if I can figure them out. But, oh, no, no, no. These are the fixed blades. That's what it was. These are the fixed blade knives. It's pretty cool. I know you went through a lot of trouble doing this. I uh, see the handle and then the, the uh, tin foil represents the blade, you know. It's really neat. It's got its own little sheath. It's pretty cool. A light blue knife. Oh, so he's got a bunch of them here. Let me show these real quick. Let's see. Different color paper. That's pretty neat. I know this, you know, so stuff like this really means a lot to me because it, you know, it takes a lot of time to do this stuff. Ooh, white and gold. That sounds neat. Ooh, I like this one. That's what I want. I want a, uh, there's a couple knives out there with titanium uh, blades. Some of them are actually all titanium, which does not hold a very good edge. Uh, but some of them are anodized, like they're, uh, they're titanium coated and then stainless, so the actual edge is stainless, the core of the blade. But there's a layer of titanium on the outside. I think it's pretty cool if you had a blade that was gold, or if you, if a knife company actually put out a line of knives, like a line of folders with different color blades. All they'd have to do is really put a layer of, you know, aluminum or uh, titanium would probably be better, and just do a coating of that, or like you know, sandwich that over your steel, and then anodize the different colors. I think they'd be pretty popular. This one, this one's brown. It's actually like an orangey color. It's pretty cool. And there's two more, but the video is getting long. I got a red one and a green one, and they all have their own sheets and everything. This was this was really nice of you to do. I, I really appreciate that. And he sent me some diamond matches from Virginia. Is that where you're from? No, oh, you're from Michigan. And you got Virginia mat. Well, I guess it's not 
like has to be purchased in Virginia. It's just made in Virginia. Green light, uh, 28th president of the United States, Woodrow Wilson. You know me with collectibles. I'd have to get all 50 different <laughs> matches. And a piece of candy. Zotz Watermelon. I can honestly say I've never heard of this. Ever. But I like watermelon. And I like hard candies. So, I'm sure that'll be tasty. So, um, that was really cool of you. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for spending the time to make all these things. And I keep all this stuff. I keep every note and every letter from people. I, I like... Uh, Going back, if I'm having a really rough day, I don't know if I ever mentioned this in a video, but if I am having kind of a rough day or I'm sad about something, I go through that stuff and I read nice letters from people and, you know, I look through old pictures and I keep little trinkets from things that I've had, you know, like a good time, like uh, ticket stubs to movies I really enjoyed with friends or something. And uh, that stuff means a lot. I'm kind of sentimental like that. So that is very cool. Okay. Knife comes out again because I have this mystery thing from Dreamcastle. I really don't know what this is. I hope it's something that I ordered. But I don't. I honestly cannot remember. That's pretty bad. I don't order stuff and forget about it. Like if I order something, I'm spending money on it, and I don't forget about it. I'm like waiting for it. But I really don't know what this is. So it could be anything. All right. It's a mystery. Ooh. I definitely did not order this. And you know what? There's no note in here because it was probably ordered direct. A yabo and I want the person I vaguely remember someone saying that they might send this to me because they liked it and they want wanted me to try it and uh, I really really appreciate it but for the life of me I cannot remember who you were so please please comment um, because I think this is awesome this is the Sutliff private stock um, number five blend number five now when I first uh, got into uh, pipe tobacco and stuff my local um, tobacconist, it's the fancy way of saying it, my local smoke shop, um, they had a huge variety of the Sutliff private stock uh, tobaccos, and they were all um, like $3, $2.99. Now, I've seen these online for like maybe $7, all the way up to $13. So I'm like, oh my God, I got to you know, get the hook up here and get a bunch of different kinds. And I, I seriously got like almost every single kind except for this one. They never had this one. And then I go look at reviews and stuff, and some people say this is the best one. So I'm thinking, all right, well, that's probably why they didn't have it, because it was sold out. But, um, yeah, pretty cool. Balanced smoking tobacco. Cool with a rich flavor. Awesome. Absolutely awesome surprise. I'm going to crack it open here. This is how a lot of these tins come, but when I uh, first got my big package, I opened them up to kind of let them breathe a little bit and to smell myself, because I was curious. But this is how they come. Kind of like a you know pop top on a soup can or tuna or whatever. Same thing, keeps the freshness. And if you can do this without cutting yourself. There we go. Okay. Ooh, this is an English. It's an English blend. Mm, it smells really good. It kind of reminds me of uh It smells very similar to Sutliff Private Stock's um, Man's Best Friend, which is also uh, in English. That had more of a rough cut. But this looks like it has a good variety of things in here. And it smells good. Actually, it's, you know, it smells like um, there's something sweet in this. <laughs> the more I smell this, oh, that's lovely. <laughs> I'll leave that in. I'm a, what, what can I say? Yeah, you know I'm really smelling it when I, I take my nose out and I got it stuck to my face. It actually smells like chocolate and campfire. But the chocolate you don't pick up on right away, but when you really get in there, and obviously my whole schnoz is in the tobacco. Yeah, you got a sweet chocolate scent with that uh, kind of campfire, burnt wood kind of aroma, that smokiness. So, very cool. I'm very excited to try this. I am so sorry that I can't remember who mentioned this because this was a while ago. This was at least two or three weeks ago. And, um, you know, a lot of people say they're going to send stuff. And, like, I don't have expectations. I always appreciate it. But a lot of times people say, like, oh, I'm going to send something. And they don't, which is no big deal. You know, things pop up. 
But I don't like, I should probably make a list of things so that like I know exactly what's going on. That's why if you do send something to me, I always appreciate a note just so that I know who it is. If nothing else, just a screen name so I can at least send you a message and say thank you and stuff, you know? So anyway, thank you very much to everyone who sends stuff. I can't wait to try this. I can't wait to try this. You know, I, I just, I, I'm going to play with these knives. <laughs> I know they're little paper knives, but I will play with them. They're pretty cool. Uh, I just want to add this little edit in at the end, obviously. It's a different day. I got different clothes on. I didn't just change for this part. Um, I showed the uh, Dream Castle thing, and I really did not know who sent me something. I got the tobacco in there. And then I got this in the mail today. And same thing, Dream Castle. And I remembered exactly what it, what it was. These are not... Um, they're not gifts from people, and it's not something I ordered. These were uh, tobacco requests that I did online. But when you do like when you sign up for like a free catalog or a free sample of something, that stuff takes like months. So I totally forgot about it. And I could tell you that something smelly in here. So yeah, same thing. Dream Castle. It's not from someone, but I mean it, it's from someone. But it's not like a viewer sent or anything. This is just samples. So honestly, there's a little square in here. I do not remember what I got because they're just samples. I happen to be looking something up, uh, pipe related, and I saw a Sutliff private stock tobacco sample. I'm like, sure, why not? I signed up for it. That's what the other thing was, the, the blend number five. I don't remember what this is, so this will be a nice little surprise for me. Let's see what it is. Nah, eh, yeah. I was gonna tear it open. Oh my God, why would I, why would I tear it open? I'm knife man, right? I have to use my knives for everything I do. So let's do that. I do love using my knives, but sometimes it's like, I don't, I just, I could tear this open. Anyway, it's still fun cutting stuff, nonetheless. Yay. All right, what we got? What we got? Aha. <laughs> so juicy. Ah, it smells great. Okay. Um, because it was a sample, I thought, why not? It's shisha. It's uh, hookah tobacco. Mixed fruit by Jules. And this stuff, I know like hookah tobacco is wet because I smoked a hookah. Um, and I've mentioned that before. People keep asking me, do hookah reviews. Do, you know, you do smoky stuff. Do the hookah stuff. Here's the deal with hookah. Um, I smoked it for four months before like I even knew what YouTube was. Four months, I bought a nice one. I try to get into the hobby. And for me, I, I liked it. It was like the flavors were just really good. The smoking was cool. Um, but I found that it made my throat scratchy. Like the next day after smoking a hookah, I'd have a very sore throat and I just didn't like it. And eventually it just got tiresome of having a sore throat all the time, you know? And I'm like, eh, eh. And that's it. I just gave it up. I sold my hookah, used the money to buy knives. But anyway, I saw this uh, sample and I figured, all right, it's free. Why not get a sample, all right? But anyway, this thing is like totally, I don't know, it's, talk about really wet. I mean, it's in the plastic, but the tobacco is so juicy and molassified, is that a word, molassified, that it's totally leaking through, but it smells so good. Oh my God. Imagine like juicy fruit gum, which I happen to like, it's old school, old school Wrigley's, who eats that anymore, but like a hundred times even better. Man, it smells good. Let's bust this open and smell it. So I figured I'd get a sample. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Maybe I'll, uh, I mean, you don't really smoke uh, shisha. You know, the whole deal with putting the coal on there and everything, it's kind of like you're, you're, basically you're baking it. You're not just taking a lighter and smoking it like you would smoke other tobacco. You're, you're kind of cooking it and taking in the smoke that way. It's not directly um, burned. And I think if, you, if I were to put this in a pipe and smoke it like that, which some people ask me, they say, well, you know, I like, I smoke hookah, I want to get it to a pipe, can I just put hookah tobacco? No, you can't. First of all, it's just, it's totally different, but you don't, yeah, you don't just like light it, you bake it. Does that make any sense? I don't know, maybe, maybe not, but, oh my God, that smells good. Here's the thing, never say never, right? So right now I'm going to say that I'm probably not going to do get a hookah and do hookah reviews and all that kind of crap. But you just never know what's gonna happen in life, you know? So we'll just leave it at that. I have no plans for it, put it that way. But yeah, that's what this is, it's another sample. Man, this is so wet, it's not even funny. It's 
So juicy. Oh my god. Juicy. Yeah, look, it even came with uh, some tips here. <laughs> it's got plastic on the box. The box is completely saturated. And it's still wrapped in plastic. Makes you wonder. But anyway, yes, it's a very, very wet tobacco. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the whole point here was it's been a long time since I've had Husha. Husha? <laughs> yeah. That's hookah shisha. Feel free to use that word. I just made it up. It's my word. Husha. <sighs> Stupid stuff. Yeah, it smells so good. It looks disgusting. Looks like like some kind of vomit or like if your cat gets sick and it has like a really wet dump or something. But it doesn't smell like that, thank God. Yeah, it smells really good. So I, I don't know what my intentions were. I just figured <laughs> it's free. Why not? Take a look at it. You know, remember what it was. And that's pretty much it. So I'm it's not like I'm gonna smoke this out of a pipe or anything. It's too wet to do anything. I don't have a hookah right now, so I know some of you have hookahs and like, oh, send it to me, send it to me. It, well, now it's open and it's a mess, so I don't know. I'll smell it for a little while longer and probably, I don't know what I'll do with it. Put it in a little baggie and save it. Perhaps in the future I will get a hookah. Who knows? No plans though, so don't don't be waiting for it. Anyway, that's all. Just wanted to show that. Yeah, the Newcastle thing really, it, it freaked me out, or Dreamcastle rather. I'm like, what the heck is this? And when I open the other thing, I'm thinking, oh, someone must have bought me something or sent me, you know, tobacco and... Like, oh, it's so cool. And, but that's all. Did you ever do that? Did you ever get a sample? Ask for a sample and like you get it like six months later and you're like, what's this from? <laughs> so that's all. Um, yep. Thanks for watching. As always, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.